Welcome back everybody to my channel. Today we are going to be diving into some tricky questions from old matric papers and I'm going to walk you through this one today which is the female hormone question. It's a topic that we all struggle with and I'm going to try and make this as simple and easy as possible so you can see where you keep making your mistakes. Now, if at this point of the video you want to pause it so that you can attempt these questions before we go through it, by all means do so. And at the very end of the video, I'm going to post the answers alongside the questions. Alright, so we need to look at a really important piece of information about this graph in front of us. It says, study the graph below. And at the top in the heading, it says, levels of two ovarian hormones. Which means that, everybody, you are only talking about estrogen and progesterone. If we've forgotten, LH and FSH are pituitary hormones, which means that in this graph, you won't see LH and you won't see FSH. Another important piece of information that we need to take from the graph is the days, and in particular, the fact that this hormone A peaks on day 14, whereas hormone B seems to peak on day 17 and 18, and that's going to give us an indication of which hormone is which. Now the first question says identify hormone A and hormone B. Now the clue to figuring out what A is, is we need to look back up onto our graph, and you will notice that hormone A is slowly increasing over time, and then it seems to peak around day 14. Now this makes sense in terms of um, estrogen, because estrogen is slowly going to be released as the follicle grows and gets bigger. And I know why you would think that this is FSH, or think that this is in particular LH, because LH also peaks on day 14. But remember, go back to the heading of the graph. The graph says ovarian hormones, which means it cannot be FSH or LH. So hormone A is slowly increasing and it peaks around day 13, 14. This can lead me to only one answer and that hormone must be estrogen. The second hormone that we are looking at here, hormone B, seems to peak around day 17, 18. And remember that this particular hormone, if you look at the graph, is very shallow throughout the entire menstrual cycle in the beginning. And then all of a sudden, it increases after day 14, which is ovulation. Now, the only hormone that is released after ovulation is progesterone. And progesterone is the ovarian hormone that is there to maintain the pregnancy. Right, let's look on to the next question, 3.2.2. What effect does an increase in hormone A have on the endometrium? Well, this is a very straightforward answer. You have to know your functions of your hormones. Remember, Estrogen is used to regrow the endometrium and maintain it and make it thicker. So it's for two marks. So what you're going to have to do is as hormone A increases, the endometrium thickens and estrogen maintains the lining. Let's move on to the next question. So the next question is all surrounded on the idea of ovulation as indicated on the graph. So the first question is a straightforward knowledge question, define ovulation. Very simple question, very simple answer for two marks. One mark to say that it is the release of an ovum, one mark, from the ovary, second mark. Then it says on which day did ovulation take place, and this is really important matrix to make sure that you actually refer to the date that is in this graph. There are graphs where people ovulate on day 12, or maybe they ovulate on day 16, but you must take it from this graph. Now in this instance, ovulation is taking place on the 14th. We know this because of the peak um, in estrogen around day 14. For C, it says which hormone is secreted by the pituitary gland that stimulates ovulation. And in particular, they are speaking about LH, luteinizing hormone, which is the hormone responsible for maturing an ovum and then releasing the ovum. And our next question in 3 to 4, it says explain why high levels of hormone B, which hopefully we've already correctly identified in the previous questions, which is progesterone, 
Will it prevent the development of new follicles? Remember, progesterone is a pregnancy hormone. You don't want to be pregnant with one fetus and then still be making follicles for a new fetus to be created. So when we answer this question, we're going to say something along the lines of high levels of progesterone will inhibit, one mark, the secretion of FSH, second mark. And what you're doing is, for the two marks, you're acknowledging what progesterone is doing. It's inhibiting when it's in high levels. And where or who is it inhibiting? It is inhibiting FSH. The final question in 325 says, explain evidence in the graph that indicates that no fertilization took place during the menstrual cycle shown above. So if we go up to our graph, and we have a closer look at it, we're going to look at hormone B. And you will see that there is a decrease of hormone B over the remaining days. Now, if progesterone is the hormone responsible for maintaining pregnancy, if a person was pregnant, we should have seen a graph that would have leveled out because the corpus luteum secretes progesterone. Progesterone maintains the pregnancy. If progesterone decreases, like we see in the graph, we know that the corpus luteum is degenerating, one mark, therefore less progesterone is secreted, therefore the endometrium layer can fall away and no pregnancy has taken place. Now I've just inserted the memo alongside, so have a look through it, familiarize yourself with what they are awarding marks to. And I'm going to do a lot more of these videos, so please keep checking back onto my YouTube channel for more tricky questions. Please like this video and subscribe. See you next time. Bye!